All right, folks, we're setting up our last rod and piston. I wanted to show you one of them. Now, a lot of these older Cummins, if you have any trouble, some of them will go together. The new ones will without doing this, but we're not... I, th this one's actually going together without heating the pistons. Uh, well, let's talk a little bit about so much stuff going on. I don't know where to even begin, but I, I was going to... I should have had all these in here and had the heads on it yesterday, but um, I got a call from one of my uh, good customers that owns a fleet of hay trucks and cow trucks, and I had four of the six in there. I was on the fourth one when he called me, and he said that one of his trucks was out on 139 at Eagle Lake, and... Uh, Second. There we go. What's going on here, man? How come everything goes smooth and until I start video on? Why does it always seem to do that? What is your why is that hanging up on there like that? Okay. That is goofier than shit. Um, so anyway, uh, he called me like 1.30 in the afternoon, and uh, so I took off and found a radiator. My buddy works for a big fuel hauling outfit here, and they run pretty much all freight liners with DD-15s in them for transport trucks. And uh, man, I don't like the way that looks right there. Let me put some fresh oil on that. Had some dirt on there. Don't like that. Um, so I, I uh, called him with the VIN number and, and I got the, he said, yeah, I got one of them radiators. So I had my customer call the place that he gets their radiators from, which is APR down in Reading. And These are, by the way, the rods came in yesterday. I don't remember if I told you that in whatever segment I was doing on this. The small end bushings were all worn out last time I remembered if I videoed anything. Um, let's see, bearing tank's gonna go to the cam side of the engine. On these Cummins, these N14s, there's alpha characters on the numbers on the rod caps. They have to match. You can't mismatch rod caps with rods. Okay, um... So that the bearing tang's going towards the cam side of the engine, and I was putting the AFA. Now, I've got the Cummins service manual right here, and there's nowhere in this Cummins service manual that tells you about rod to piston orientation. Basically, all they're telling you in that service manual that um hang on she's being a hard ass he's being a little hard ass on me there she goes I only got my head and my ass wired together. Um, where was I at on this whole discussion? Bearing tang goes towards the campsite of the engine, but as you'll notice, it's hard to tell on this one, but the piston cooling nozzle sits offset in the cylinder. And see the notch in the skirt? Because this is a two-piece piston. This skirt comes away from the piston, but there's a notch on each side. So if you turn it, you know, 180 either way, that piston cooling nozzle is still going to squirt up in there. I don't see anything. There's no arrow marked front on the pistons or anything like that. Um, where is the box with the 
I'm looking for the box. Here we are with the compression rings and the snap rings for the wrist pin. So anyway, let's go back to the story of last night. So, um, at the time I got the radiator and the coolant and everything lined out and got loaded, I didn't get out of here till two o'clock and it's a three hour drive. And where he was at, he was right up there at the summit on 139, right before you get, you'll come past Eagle Lake there on the bottom end and you'll climb up on the summit. And then that summit is kind of, you'll go a ways about another 10 miles here into Susanville. Then you start going way down into the canyon into Susanville. So he was right up there almost probably maybe quarter mile from the summit. Anyway, I got there and then I, when I got there, I, I looked at it and I said, shit, your fan blade come apart. That's why that, one of the fan blades on that plastic fan had broke and part of it went through the radiator. So, of course, I was committed, and nobody was going to have, I knew nobody was going to have a fan anywhere, especially by the time I got there, it was 5 o'clock, everything was closed anyway. In these small towns, everything's closed, you know. And so anyway, we, we had the, got the radiator out of it, we took the one blade that had broke, we inspected all the blades very meticulously, to make sure there was no other cracks and other blades and I I said well let's just saw the one off and we'll put the radiator in and we'll just see if we have a se severe vibration problem if it's going to shake itself to pieces or not because it's out of balance now and, and I said if, if it does shake maybe we'll cut the one on the opposite side off I don't know what else are we going to do and so when you're you know in the middle of nowhere you got to improvise. You got to make something work. So I did. I cut that one blade off with my die grinder. And we, uh, I need to put a bearing on this. I should have a couple bearings right here. One for the rod and one. So, anyways, we didn't we didn't have any problems. Uh, I I I got everything wrapped up I got there about five and I had the radiator out of it and in it and everything back together at right at 850 and keep in mind the driver was pretty mechanically inclined and he was helping me because we were we knew we were in the dark and we need to make this happen in a very expedient manner hold on let me get the camera up here and then I got home about midnight so get in there you son of a bitch they're going together too tight okay piston ring time I've had pretty damn good luck with these AFA kits, knock on wood. Which I kind of find interesting that a lot of these later kits that I've been getting, the newer, I mean, they used to, you used to hardly ever see uh, an oil control ring marked top on it. They were, it didn't matter, but I've been getting a, quite a few of these kits now where they're, they're marked. So they, they're, they're, they're making them directional, I guess, now that now most of the compression rings, most of them were always uh, directional, but not the oil control rings. So it's kind of a new thing, it seems like to me. But Let's see if I can get lucky here. Damn it. <sighs> you dirty bastard, you. Where did their ring go? Oh, it slid down there, you son of a bitch. Okay. Well, let's see if I can get it. These can be kind of a pain in the butt a little bit, but we'll get her. <laughs> okay, I think we might. 
I'm getting to where my eyes are just totally shit up close. They really are. They're just absolute shit. I think I'm going to have to bite the bullet and go to the eye doctor and get a pair of permanent prescription glasses to wear, which I did not want to do, but I think I'm going to be forced to do it. It's getting to where it's kind of ridiculous trying to see some of this stuff, you know. Sucks getting old. Okay. Okay, and obviously <clears throat> these are marked top. And this one's like twice the this one's like twice the thickness of this one. So obviously the thinner groove is where the thinner one goes and the thicker groove is where the thicker one goes. I didn't even have to go to get a like a master's degree in college to figure that one out. There's an outfit here that is kind of a local outfit and they're they're one of them outfits where they think that a college education means you're smart. <laughs> and I've met so many college educated people that were some of the dumbest bastards I've ever run into in my life. Had no no ability to common no critical thinking skills, no common sense, practical knowledge. Is this damn phone going off again? It's been ringing off the hook all day. Okay, so the book tells you don't put any of the ring gaps over the wrist pins. That's what it says in the service manual, on the coming service manual. So we're gonna follow the directions and do what it says. We'll put that one right there. We'll put this other one, like right there. And then we'll put this one over here. Nothing's facing the wrist pin. Okay, and the last bearing, we'll go on the bearing cap. All right, so I'll meet you over at the engine block and we'll put them in. Okay. So I get to point in the right direction. Okay, where's the bearing tang at? Wherever the rod number is, that's where the bearing tang is. So it's on this side over here. So gently slide it in the hole. Make sure you lubricate your piston, your skirt, and all that, and your ring area. And I always get my liner wet with oil too. What I do on these, on these, I, I don't like pulling the oil cooler if I don't have to. And you can't get these piston cooling nozzles out on this side without doing that. So I just turn it just a little bit to clear the nozzle. And then once I go down in, I'll, I'll be clear of it. You gotta be careful with this ring compressor. If you put the gap of your ring compressor into the gap of the ring, you'll have trouble. Okay. Now we'll get underneath, pull it on down to the rod, or the journal, I should say. Oh. Yeah, I was gonna put a video up yesterday, but I didn't get in till midnight, so I just took a shower and went to bed. Called her a day finally. It was a long one. It was about 20 hours. All right, guys, I just gotta get the rod cap and we'll torque the rods, all six rods down. And then we're finally ready to start putting head gaskets and heads on it. Okay guys, so you can see, 
We got the new bushing in there and the oil hole is lined up. Very important. What we're gonna do here is take a little bit of 1540, line that up or lube that up. And we'll get our accessory drive. And I'm gonna lube the shaft up just a touch. He got really lucky that he didn't destroy the whole accessory drive and the shaft and everything. He kind of got really lucky there. Um, but what I want to do though, you know what I need to do, is put the seal in it. Um, should I do it now? Is that key going to cut that seal? No. Shouldn't, I don't think. Jeff and Jay Tater was asking about this. What do we got going on here? What do we got? It's like a dust seal that goes over the end of it. Something of that nature. Now that is our accessory drive seal. We would have to pull that key out of there. Or do we just knock the seal in there right now? Well, maybe I'll put this, I'll just do it that way. Uh, let's find the gasket for that. It should be in the kit here somewhere. I remember seeing it. I think that's actually might be. That is not it. There it be. thing late tonight and get something accomplished on it. That would be the correct gasket, but it's got to go like that. Okay. So, Jeff. Um, I'll show you right quick. So, I didn't, I don't think I showed this, the disassembly of this very well. So I guess it's easier to backtrack once I get it on there and that way I can explain it a little more clearly. Let's just go reversal of disassembly. So I'll put it on there and I'll just kind of explain to you, Jeff, there what, and it's easy. I mean, you're more than capable of doing this. These are, once you figure these out, these old Cummins aren't too bad, you know. Um, so I got that engine rolled around to where I've got my mark. My timing mark is in here. I have my one mark marked on my accessory drive. So let's, uh, get the accessory drive. Be kind of nice if they had studs in here, you know, it'd be easier to line things up. Bolts here for it. That way, my gasket stays aligned. Okay. <laughs> now, if you're going to rebuild this, I've rebuilt a few of these. I'll go over this with you guys. Um, so obviously you got the bushing in here in the timing cover, and obviously you need to oil the, line the oil hole up that feeds the bushing, which lubricates the shaft in the bushing. And then you can take this bolt out here, and there's two tapered bearings, one on each side of this in there. So I thought I would throw that out there, that way you knew. So the mark is going to be right there. I actually probably could go back the other way just to skosh with it. Um, I'm 
Oh, it's the wrong way. That looks pretty good there. I will be completely honest, and probably one of the things that I hate about the old Cummins is the accessory drive. The whole accessory drive system, I really can't stand it. <laughs> I really can't. I think they're just a piece of shit, to be honest with you. to do that. I think I got it lined up on the first try. Okay. No, I didn't. I did not. You just can't see it. It's 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 a tough deal if you're doing one of these. It's, it's not easy, I'm telling you. So that mark is about right in there. I gotta go way down. I'm way off. I am way off, man. I am way the hell off. It's got to be somewhat close, I think, maybe. fucking pain in the ass. I hate these things. I really do. I fucking hate them. But I'll be damned. I did get it lined up this time. It's lined up. The accessory drive is lined up. Okay. Right on. So Jeff, there you go. It's a, they're a pain in the butt, but you see I got the yellow mark with the one tooth on the accessory that I've lined up with the two teeth on the cam gear. And now we'll have to knock. Uh, let's see, is that seal? We'll have to pull this nut back off of here. Now on these N14s and the big cam, these head gaskets I've <laughs> these little grommets these rubber grommets for the water passages you got to really really inspect them and make sure one didn't pop out in shipping 
I had one a long time ago in a big Cam 400. I was in a hurry and I threw it on there and had water and oil. Is that what it was? I'm trying to remember. We had water and oil or it was pushing water or something. And one of these, one of these grommets had come out there and we didn't see it when we, when we put the head gaskets on there. So it, it definitely pays to make sure that every one of those son of a guns are in there. There's even a little rubber grommet around each head bolt hole. They all look like they're accounted for there, so. Okay, we've got brand new cylinder heads over here. Let's uh, get them on box. I'm not certain what all I'm going to have to swap over, but from head to head. Okay, there's the cylinder head. Let's see, obviously. Can I put the head on and then... Those are rocker boxes and those water manifolds will go in between the rocker boxes. Josie, you're all right, girl. You're all right. I think we can kind of just throw them on there and then on the ends of the cylinder heads, we'll have to put the uh, plugs in it. So you got to pay attention to that as well. stuff like that in a sack you'll have to get some pipe dope oh shit I got the dowels and everything in there so let's see these will be your these will be your crossovers here oh, damn it Actually, let me see. That'll be the blanks for the end cylinder heads. And then there's our little Allens, and these are to blank off the fuel passage on the end of it. So, um, I'm trying to remember. Let's look at this head here. I don't remember which one was front and which one was back. Obviously, this was either a front or a back one because they've got plugs here. Well, this must have been the back one. This was the back head, I believe, if I remember correctly. Or am I screwed up here? Let me look. Obviously, that was the middle one there. It's going to have plugs in both sides. That one's got plugs in that side. And there's another elbow fitting like that in that one. So I don't think it really matters. The elbows are the same and the hoses are the same on each end. So basically what we need to do, we can probably just throw a head on there and then put the plugs in the end of it and each end. I'll show you what I'm talking about right now. actually go in oh, 
finger getter, man. They're finger getters. Okay. And then we'll put a plug here and a plug here. You can see where your fuel crossovers go. So you're gonna have a blank on the end, just like this right here. See this blank right here? That's what they sent them blanks for. So we'll grab our, grab that, but there's gonna be seals underneath those. You just don't stick this on there with no, with no uh, seals, because it will leak fuel, trust me. Okay, I think I found the right O-rings here. Okay, those will go there. Yeah, you kind of got to get this stuff lined out before you proceed because, especially between the heads, if not, you're in serious trouble because you have to pull the head back off to do that. Which the guy really doesn't want to do that if he absolutely can avoid it. And I forgot they are putting lock washers on these set screws here. Years ago, I had a guy that was running in California. And any of you guys that are familiar with the area know where Termo is. Termo is pretty much out in the middle of nothing. You take, you go out by Tui Lake and you go out, uh, Basically, you go, you, you take the lookout turn off off 139 and cut across over to Beaver, and then you go straight right past the red barn, what they call the red barn, and then you go uh, back, and that'll intersect back with 139 again, and you take a right on 139, and you uh, go down to where they, the grass, it's called the Grasshopper Termo Cutoff. And you take that road, and then you go, I don't know, it probably goes probably 10 or 12 miles. And that runs into 395. And then you take a left on 395 and then go to Termo, and Termo's just, there's nothing there. I mean, it's just sagebrush and desert. And I had a N14 guy between the heads here. These O-rings, the uh, set screws had come loose on his crossovers and it blew the O-rings out of it. And I took some set screws and a plate and crossover and all that stuff with me. So uh, anyway, yeah, we, that was quite a, quite an adventure. I get so many adventures, you know. Okay, so the back head, the top, we determined that the top line was the return and the bottom was the supply. So, I don't have to worry about it exactly right now as long as I get the ones between the cylinder heads on. Um, so, the next head, we're going to have to do it on the floor. So, the next head, put the ones, the two plugs in this side. Make sure you do that. before, and, and make sure you put your crossovers on before you put your rocker boxes on. Start off at 100 foot-pounds. Sequence, then you go, I think, 220 and then 90 degrees after that. Okay, let's start on this head right here. Start in the middle and work your way out. Is that the right size socket? Okay.
so do that one, 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 that one. I still got to do this one on the end, but we're going to get to this one. And then the two that are on the end here. These engines are, to be honest with you, they're a little more labor intensive than an ISX is. Some guy made in the comment section that some friend of his told him that he could end frame an N14 Cummins in 10 hours. And I'm gonna call that out as an absolute complete fabricated lie that that guy is completely full of shit. Why are we not going anymore? What are we doing here? Huh, it's kind of odd. Why did it not? Why did it not do what it was supposed to be doing there? Interesting. Very interesting. that all right well basically guys you guys get the gist of it we're gonna go got this torque specs on my phone here uh, hang on a second okay so my I got a mark on my socket here and put a mark right there perfectly with that so I'll put a mark at 90 degrees right there this on these is not a hundred percent critical I've read service manuals on these that said 90 degrees and if you get more than one flat less than two flats so
This one's going to be the same way. Put a mark right there. will be the last sequence. Then we can start pushing push rods and rocker boxes and all that good stuff in there. Well, one thing I can say about this whole thing that's going on, I think the American people are finally starting to wake up a little bit and realize that their government hates them. And I'll say something really controversial. The government hates white people. Well, they were the enemies of the entire world, aren't we? You definitely got the compression tour. Mark that one. All right. We're on the B mark. If we're on the B mark, then that means. I know I was on pretty close to number one. I just was past it, so I'll have to come back around to A. When we come back around to A, we'll be on number six, but we're gonna be at number five here. And on these big cams and these N14s, it depends on the big cams, what tile style of injectors you have, if you have top stops or STC injectors or on the N14s, though, they're all the same that I know of, is they're going to be running the outer base circle method on the cam. So one way to tell is on your companion cylinder. On your companion cylinder, your intake valve will be open. Here's your intake. The intakes are on the... Another thing to remember, intakes are on the inside. Exhausts are on the outside. Okay, so the intakes are on the inside. So that's just the way I remember it. These two are intakes. You can you also verify by looking at your intake port and lining them up where your valves are. So you'll notice that your intake valve is partially open on the companion cylinder. Okay, I was actually looking at some of these were 14 and 27 and some were 11 and 23. This one is 14 and... Um... Huh. That's injector setting, valve lash, 14. But see, this is kinked up. So it's 14 and 27 is what it is. Let me 
Um, hang on a second, guys. I can have to straighten this data plate. It's kind of tweaked on it. Let me get the old Leatherman out here and see if I can straighten it. There we go. Straighten the plate out. And I bet the 27 is hiding into there. There's the 27 right there. 14, 27. Okay, so you're gonna set the injector on the same cylinder you're setting the valves. I'll set this exhaust valve first. These are brand new cylinder heads, so they're not remands or any of that. They're new. I'm sure they're Chinese knockoff, but whatever. Been getting them from Diesel Cast West. this one let me check this one again you know that's eh, a little loose we'll tighten that up I'd like to get the box in on there if I could I don't have an offset I don't have an offset one it'll go down on there but I don't like that Tight, that's for damn certain. Okay, we got a little bit on her. One thing I didn't like about these was I wish that rocker adjusting nut set up a little bit higher above that rocker box and it sure would make life a little easier on a guy. Okay, now the injector. What you're gonna do is back it all the way out. Make damn sure that your push rods are down in your recesses where they're supposed to be. Feel it when it hits right there and back it off two flats. So I'm going to make this flat here. Where's the paint marker? The paint marker would be handy for that. And where did it So, just make a mark right there. And this can be one, two. Okay. Now we'll go around. Uh, so, one, five, three. Be going to the C mark now on this. Go 
all around the C mark. Good compression. Way better than it was before. Let's see if I can see that mark. Let me go ahead and mark it with this paint marker. Sure makes life a lot easier. You gotta make sure you're not marking like the uh, the one six mark. Make sure you're marking A, B, and C. Nothing's worse than a guy losing the keyway out of the shaft on this end and just shoving the dam. Or another thing is somebody will just stick the accessory drive in and not time it with the timing marks like I showed you. And then you're trying to run the overhead and you're all screwed up trying to figure out where in the hell you're at. That's really nice. Let's see, okay. So, 153, so you'll see that three will have the intake and exhaust valves loose. It's like so, and then look, your intake's open on number four. That's how you know on, on these that you're in the right spot. Your intake on your companion cylinder will be partially open. I'm going to do the injector first on this one. Just kind of curious how far out. It wasn't too far out, but they say to you read the instructions on a lot of these, though they tell you to run the screw in and out and get the oil out of the injector. I've read that. I've tried it numerous ways and it never really seemed to make any difference, but go down till it touches. Don't try to reef it down. Now back it off two flats. And we're gonna make that our, fl our flat one. So one flat, two flats. Two flats is 120 degrees. I hate putting an open end on there like that. I, I am not gonna lie to you, but I don't like that either. Okay, um, so which one is this one? I need the 14 thousandths one. Yeah, I'm, I'm not going to lie to you guys, I, I much rather, the only thing I don't like about working on stuff up here is the airport, that air base being right there and the planes flying right over my head all day long, I don't, I don't really enjoy that very much, but it's okay, it's cool when I first moved here, you know, but then, I mean, of course we're right by the train tracks too, that doesn't help either, then we're right by a major thoroughfare, Altamont Drive, and it's definitely trains, planes, and automobiles around this place. <laughs> 